we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Welcome back to my kitchen. If you're new here, hello, welcome. I share pretty much anything that happens in my kitchen here on this channel. So if you love grocery hauls, meal plans, what's for dinner videos, and monthly freezer meal prep, and the occasional treat videos, please stick around, hit that subscribe button, and become a part of my family here on YouTube. But today I have a super fun video to share with you all. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Emma Fontanella. I think it is. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but over on Emma's Goodies, it's a huge YouTube channel. She's an absolute sweetheart. If you've been there and you're familiar with her channel, you know every time she talks, she literally sounds like she's smiling or laughing. She's just amazing to listen to. So anyways, she's actually a pastry chef. So she's actually a professional in the field and she has some amazing recipes on her website. I have tried out four or five of them now and I'm absolutely obsessed literally every single time they work out. So over the Christmas period, I wanted to try out making her Christmas cookie box for myself. It took me forever to film, but I'm going to go ahead and get into that now, show you sort of how I did it and where I went wrong and the things that I learned. Obviously, I am not a professional chef like she is and props to her, respect to her. She did an amazing job and she really does do an amazing job with her channel in general. I love her so much. I'm going to leave her links down below if you did want to head on over and check out her channel for yourself. You will seriously subscribe within like the first one to two videos. She's just so amazing. I could not recommend her enough but let's go ahead and get into the cookie making and I will show you sort of how that process went. Let's just say it wasn't as easy as it was for her. So I've just started out by putting everything out on the bench that I'm going to need for today's cookie box. A lot of this stuff I already had but I did have have to buy a few items like these piping bags. I am not too familiar with piping so this is a learning curve for me but I did grab these. They looked fun and I also got some fun little cookie cutters to go with the Christmas theme. So the first thing I'm doing here is making up the base cookie dough. The main ingredients here were butter, lots and lots of butter, powdered sugar, flour, egg whites and vanilla extract. So fairly simple ingredients there. This cookie dough will come together quite soft to begin with but by the time we divide up the dough and add the different flavor variations it will come together a lot more like a normal cookie dough. Although in my case I will say mine turned out a little on the dry side. Not the recipe's fault at all but my own. This video seriously took me about five hours to film trying to learn all the techniques while filming by the time I got to the last couple of cookie doughs they were struggling. <laughs> I should have covered them or put them in the fridge in hindsight but as I said I learned a lot from filming this video and that is just the beginning. So now that I have my base cookie dough I am just going ahead and dividing that up evenly into five containers. Emma used a kitchen scale for this which I don't actually own so instead I just used an ice cream scoop here and I did my best to divide it evenly that way. I think that I ended up getting about four to five scoops in each container. So for this first recipe, it's just a simple butter cookie with no additives. So I popped that straight into the piping bag. So excited to pipe these cute little cookies that Emma piped so gracefully, by the way. And I popped through three bags during this process. Who knew that piping cookies would be so difficult? 
I eventually realized where I was going wrong, but that didn't mean that it got any easier. I was squeezing the piping bags way too hard. And at one stage, there was a little air between the dough and the actual tip. So of course, that made it pop as well. And let's just say it was a hot mess for a bit here. So eventually I was over it and the bags were just kept breaking. I was sick of it. I didn't want to put together another one. So I finished the last couple cookies off by just pushing the dough through the little metal tube at the end. You guys, I did mention that I'm no professional chef. But moving right along to this second batch. So this one, I believe, was called a Linzar cookie. To this one, you will need to add almond flour, some extra regular flour, and also some almond extract. So this stuff is strong. I've never cooked with this before, but it's strong. Just a heads up. To the third batch, I'm making the chocolate sugar cookies by adding cocoa powder and milk. Another thing I learned here today was to bloom the cocoa powder by mixing warm milk with the cocoa powder to make a paste type consistency before adding it to the base dough. I think that Emma mentions this will give it a deeper chocolate flavor. So anything with a stronger chocolate flavor I am down for. So I just went ahead and mixed that together and then added that straight onto the base cookie dough. And I actually had to mix that together for a while to get it to combine properly, but it worked. The next one I am making here is the gingerbread style cookies. So for this one, you need the ginger, cinnamon, some cocoa powder, which I think was just for color because these were quite close in color to the chocolate ones. And then just a little bit of extra flour to this one as well. By this point, I had taken way too long. I probably didn't need to add extra flour to these cookie dough recipes because they were just so dry by this point. But to the last lot, I just added some extra vanilla extract and that unneeded extra flour. Then I just split the dye in two and added some red food dye to half of it, which really helped give the box a festive feel. The next step was to roll out all the cookie doughs between some baking paper and put them in the fridge for an hour before cutting them into shapes. The cutting and decorating was by far the funnest part and probably the only part that I didn't mess up. So hooray for me.
I went ahead and baked all of those cookie sheets on 170 in the oven for 15 minutes and now they have had some time to cool down on the bench now so now for the fun part I decorated all of these cookies fairly similar to the way Emma did her box I just adjusted some slightly I think for the fillings I used melted chocolate and homemade strawberry chia jam so stay tuned for that recipe coming up soon but for these chocolate squares I'm just drizzling them with melted chocolate and I'm filling the round ones up with chocolate before drizzling those two. I'm pretty certain that Emma used a piping bag to do this but you guys saw my piping bag skills earlier. Not only was it probably quicker for me to use a spoon but I'm not even sure if I had any bags left that weren't broken. I wanna hold his hand cause I can't stop thinking about him And would he understand if I told him how I feel about him so moving on to the red cookies now, I added some of this Betty Crocker vanilla frosting to those to kind of make like an Oreo style cookie. Then for the little men, I frosted them and dipped them into some sprinkles for the kids. I started by attempting to sprinkle some on but soon realized that would take years so dipping them straight in saved a ton of time and honestly made them look so much cuter. I will say though although me and the piping bag weren't really getting along today the piping bag would have made the red ones look so much neater. If you end up watching Emma's video her filling looked like a little perfect clouds just glad that this is not a competition now for the homemade strawberry chia jam for this one you only need three ingredients i did end up adding a fourth but to start off i just added a full 500 gram bag of frozen strawberries to the pot and let that heat through in the saucepan stirring occasionally until they were heated through and started to bubble a little bit which didn't take too long and then i mashed them before adding in a tablespoon of powdered sugar half a tablespoon of lemon juice and then I added two big tablespoons of chia seeds. I mixed that together in the pot and then I just removed it from the heat. I let that cool down for a little while and then I transferred it into this old strawberry jam container. I just washed this out and kept it for this exact purpose so it was literally perfect. The chia seeds do make this jam thicken up really nicely and it literally only takes 10 minutes to make and it lasts in the fridge for about a week if you put it into an airtight container. So any leftovers, you can add it to your pancakes or toast in the mornings for a healthier choice of topping. There's just endless possibilities to use this jam, but it is just such a healthier option. Uh -huh. So to put these cookies in, I scored these cute little cookie boxes last year at the reject shop. They came in a pack of two, which was perfect because this recipe made enough to fill two cookie boxes, but there was still plenty of dough left over though for the kids to have fun with during the week, baking and decorating their own Christmas cookies. But if you did want to try this cookie box out for yourself and give it a shot, I have linked Emma's goodies video in the the description box down below where you will find the exact measurements in her video. I'm pretty sure she has them all listed in her description box if you wanted to screenshot those and try it out for yourself. But although this was not the easiest, the cookie boxes were a success in the end. Everyone loved them so much, but let's just say I am in no rush to be making these again next year. But I just want to let you all know that I really appreciate you watching this video today. If you're still here and watching, drop a cookie emoji in the comments down below. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have the best week and I'll see you back here again really soon with a brand new video.